with General Robin Olds. And General, it's really a privilege to get to talk to you and have you visit here in Huntington today. And uh, you're associated with this beautiful P-51 Mustang out here, SCAT-7. Now, you flew this airplane 50 years ago. It has to really be an emotional experience to see that airplane today. It's very difficult to explain the, the feeling of seeing a piece of equipment like that. That uh, I received that airplane right at the end of the war. Only about three weeks left in the war, I think. And uh, so it had very low time. And they boxed it up and shipped it home. And it sat in boxes forever and ever and ever. Uh, went through about six or seven owners. Finally, Jim got hold of it and the paperwork. And uh, it was a thrill to have a phone call from Jim Shuttleworth saying, what was the serial number of the last P-51 you flew in World War II? And oddly enough, I knew because the Plastic Model Society had told me what it was. I didn't know, really that they told me, so I could rattle it right off to Jim. He said, 4472922, and he said, I just bought it. And then, it's amazing. It took him two years to uh, refurbish it, clean it up, and get it back in a really beautiful shape that it's in today. And this airplane, as we see it today, looks exactly like it was when you flew it. Not quite. Almost, but not quite. This one has a back seat in it. Obviously, we didn't have those. Where the back seater sits now was a tank full of, of uh, gasoline, which which helped us with the, the range. Uh, yeah. This little airplane is remarkable. The longest mission I flew in a P-51 was seven hours and 20 minutes. You know, and possibly had an engagement in between that time. Is that right? Yeah, yeah. We had a big fight and uh, used up fuel. You know, when you go full throttle, uh, you really burn the fuel with that huge engine. But you can you can nurse it back, but for seven hours and 20 minutes, you know, that that's long, long, long time, especially on your bottom. So this airplane, uh, you flew it about three weeks in World War II, and then you lost track of the airplane all these years, uh, didn't know where it was until you heard from uh, Jim Shuttleworth. That's right, that's right, Jim. For some reason, the paperwork went with the airplane. And the fellow bought it. It was in a crate in California at an air depot for 1100 Jim says 1160 I read 1192 Who cares about 30 bucks when you, think you, you buy yourself a Mustang with that amount of money? Un, unbelievable. Just unbelievable. Well, I'd like to talk a little bit about your career. I know you were in the Air Force for some 30 years, and uh, you're a West Point graduate. How did you get interested in flying, and how did, uh, how did your career begin? And uh, at 21 years old, you found yourself flying P-38s in World War II. Well, my dad was a World War I pilot, and he stayed in the service. So I grew up on air bases. That was my life. There was never any doubt in my mind what I was going to do when I grew up. I was going to fly airplanes. Then I wouldn't have to work for a living. <laughs> but but uh, going way back to the 20s, you know, uh, airplanes, as I repeat myself, were just a natural part of my life. I went to West Point because I wanted a regular commission. But back in the 30s, you know, you if you were a reservist, your, your tenure was very problematical. So I said, I'm going to go to West Point. Never occurred to me they'd hand me a rifle and say, go shoot somebody with this thing. No way. <laughs> the P-38, uh, a remarkable airplane. Uh, you had several victories in it. Uh, anything that you'd like to tell us about uh, some experiences? I know uh, earlier you shared with me the compressibility uh, situation. Tell us a little bit about that. Well, the, the P-38 was a remarkable airplane for its time. Uh, it, it's two engines, lots of power. It was agile, particularly down low. But it had one vicious trait. Do not try to dive from altitude because you'd hit what is... We didn't really know what it was, but it's compressibility. And uh, this is just before you go through the sound barrier. 
and in the case of the 38, those engine nacelles and the pilot's nacelle created a shock wave that blanked out your elevators. And uh, you, you were headed straight down, and that's the direction you kept going in unless you could manage to recover. And it, that was a long, slow process. You had to get down into thicker air. So you had an experience with compressibility uh, in an engagement one time? Just one. That was enough. Uh, there's, there's a fellow here right now named B.E. Hollister, and he and I attacked oh, between 55 and 60 ME 109s, the two of us. <laughs> and we, it was a heck of a scrap. And then some other airplanes piled in, and I saw a 109 after a Mustang way down below me. So I, I without thinking, rolled over and dove. And from there on out, to heck with the fight. All I wanted to do was cut, get out of that dive, which I did, but I lost my canopy in, in pulling out. You were at some 20,000 feet and went all the way down to how close to the ground? Well, I know this may sound like a gross exaggeration, but believe me, if there had been a tree in the middle of a wheat field near, near the town of Rostock up on the Baltic, I'd still be there. And I turned away to go home. I was... It, it shook me up, and I was looking around at the airplane to see if any other damage I could see, and there was a 109 behind me shooting. So I reacted, pulled the yoke back, and it, I immediately stalled. He shot past me. He overtook, he over, went right past, and I, all I had to do was roll out straight and shoot, and down he went. So that was number three that day. And, oh boy, all I wanted to do was go home. <laughs> Please. Yeah. Through your career, 17 victories. And Four of those were over Hanoi. And in your career, uh, P 38s, P 51s, and F 4s? Uh, those are the airplanes I fought in. But I flew many, many others, you know, in between. You know, the old P 80s, the first jets, the F 86s. F 101s, F 100s, um, you know, F 104s. And, um, uh, you know, you just, if you stay or hang around long enough, you're going to get to fly a lot of uh, fascinating, wonderful airplanes. Favorites, my actual favorite are the 51 and the uh, F 4.